What is up guys, welcome your faces back to a brand new video. Today, Jack is eating a sausage roll behind the camera. You cannot see it, but he's absolutely loving it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we're gonna do today is we are actually gonna go over the things you need to check for your MOT. Jack is an MOT tester. A lot of you guys have requested this video. So these are gonna be things that you guys can check instead of going away and paying a garage for your MOT and then finding out later on down the line that you need a new wiper or something so little that you could have just done before. So, the first step we're gonna do is, Jack's gonna finish eating his sausage roll, and then we're gonna go ahead and check the front lights. Now the things we are checking for on the lights are this. First thing is to check that they're all actually working. That'd be a good start. <laughs> uh, so you want your side lights. Which of these? One. Two. And red lights. Yeah. One. Two. You have shown on that wall. The big pattern. Make sure it's not that important as long as it's got a beam pattern. If it's too high or too low, then most of the time we'll just adjust it. Make sure it's go park next to up to a wall, and make sure you got a beam pattern. If it's too high, like you just said, then that needs adjusting. But that is perfectly fine as it is. You don't want to be dazzling other road users, do you? Basically, that's the whole purpose of no, that as well. I don't like it. <laughs> what else you got to check for in your lights? Your indicators. Yep. Do that again. So, that indicator's on. Now that indicator's on. You're also checking as well, on there, that they are actually orange, aren't you? Yeah, and make sure they're flashing at a normal rate, not like constantly on or ridiculously fast. Next bit, obviously, still in the theme of lights, we've got the rear lights. So, right here. Position lights. Uh, your bed lights and your brake light. There you go. And your indicator. Yep. So that is it for your lights. Basically, you want to make sure that all your bulbs are working. I know it sounds like common sense, but these are common things that people do forget to check. So make sure your lights are working, make sure your beam pattern is correct. Also make sure your indicator lights are orange and you haven't got no dazzling lights or flashing or anything like that and make sure everything's in working order. Also on that note as well, make sure your hazard button is working. That is also a check. So moving on from the headlights, that's now done. We're gonna check the wipers. So for those of you wondering, these are your wipers. You do have one on the back as well, but Jack's just stated that that one's not checked for the MOT. Your two front ones are. What are they looking out for on the wipers? Make sure the rubber's not split. So what it means by rubber is, if you lift them up, it means this bit right here, all the way up. So that shouldn't be split. Anything else, Jackie boy? Put it down and I'll show you. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to cover that. Yes. Use the wash and wipe, make sure it clears your windscreen properly and don't need smear marks. So, you heard that, make sure it clears them properly, no smear marks should be left. See there? No smear marks, obviously there's the wet marks, but it's not smear. So that is it, number two, your wipers. Your back one again is not checked on the MOT, so that's why a lot of people do the wiper deletes as well. For the third one, you've got to make sure that your bonnet catch opens. Now Jack is going to demonstrate. Hey! So with these, just pull the little tab up. I've only got one hand, so this is going to be difficult. There we go. And then Jack is going to kindly put that um, thing right there for us. Thanking you. So, number three, successful. What is number four? What are we checking for number four, Jackie boy? Make sure your battery's secure. So just give it a wiggle. So, there you go. Make sure make, it's not... Make sure it's not going to slide out, it's not going to fall 
onto the floor or anything like that. We do need a new battery. And by the way, we are using the flipping Fiesta for this, if you guys hadn't noticed already. What else? You might as well just check them all whilst you're here anyway. Check your oil level, your power steering fluid, your coolant, brake fluid. And you might as well top your water up, because don't have those. All right, so for those people that's not sure, can you kindly point to where those are and explain what they are? Check your oil level with a dipstick. Just pull it out, get a wipe, then stick it back in. And then pull it out again, and then you check between the two marks. So just make sure it's actually between the two marks. Just under the maximum. So that's how you check your oil. Next. Power steering. So power steering fluid, sat right here. You can't really get this one wrong, it's got a picture of a steering wheel on it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you want to be looking out for, for your power steering fluid. Make sure that is topped up properly. Your measurements are on the side of the reservoir, so that's easy, very easy to follow. Next, I'm assuming it's going to be coolant. That's this one. Which is right here. Just be careful when you take the cap off if you've been driving it, because it's going to be hot. Yeah, it, it does say on it, usually. Um, caution, this usually says, do not open when hot. Now, depending on your car, certain cars have different coolant colours and all that sort of stuff. This one takes red, but again, you want to just undo that cap and make sure the reservoir is filled to where it should be. This is usually uh, a mix of antifreeze, coolant and water which is a 50-50 ratio. So, brake fluid, sat right up at the top. It is usually tucked away somewhere. It is different location on each car, guys, so make sure you check in your manual if you wanna know where that is. That usually doesn't need touching, unless you have a brake problem, <laughs> which you'd know if you had a brake problem. You're supposed to have brake fluid changes every so often, at least every two years. So that is checking the liquid levels in the engine bay. So that is number five. Now what we're going to check next for number six is... Make sure all your doors open from the outside and the both front open from the inside. Okay, so let's demonstrate that. That is basically what it means by that. So make sure it opens from the outside as well as from the inside. You have to check all your doors on that as well. Same as on the other side, make sure that's all engaged. That is in case of an emergency. You need to be able to open your door in a quick escape. Next thing is mirrors. You just want to make sure that they're secure, so just give them a little wiggle. And make sure your glass isn't smashed. Again, obvious reasons, so you can see people behind you, so you're not going to pull out on anybody. So, last off for the exterior, and by exterior we don't mean mechanically. What you want to check is for your back lights being cracked or any lights being cracked, general damage on the car, your fuel cap as well. So let's go over here. So what we're checking for there, just to make sure everything's working as it should. Yes, yeah, make sure the seal's all right in there. Make sure it does actually have a seal. Again, this is all just safety, guys. Basically, the MOT is about being safe, making sure the car is safe to be on the road. You're not going to put anybody else at danger. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the interior, onto the checks you need to do for that. Interior-wise, the things you need to check in there is make sure your seats pull forward, also your seat belts. What else is there? Make sure they fold. I, don't, I think we've already said that, though. Yeah, just make sure they fold that like, forward, so basically your seat clips. So if it's a three-seater. Like you've just seen there. Um, also, we've took the back seats out for this. If you're new to this channel and you're not sure what's happening with this car, it's a flipping project, so go back and see. But you do need to check your seat belts in the back as well as all your clips and everything else that you need to um, for your seats. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check the seat belts just to make sure that they're working for obvious reasons. These are, again, these are checks that you guys can do rather than paying somebody else to do it. Pull it all the way out, check for fraying, and any cups or anything. Give it a pull, and then make sure it retracts back in on its own. Make sure that locks. Then put it in the buckle. Give it a pull, make sure that's all right. Make sure it releases with a bit of pressure on it. And that's about it. 
So basically what Jack's done there is just check for anything fraying or anything like that. Do that for all your seat belts, all your seats, make sure all the mechanisms are working, make sure you can pull them forward, especially in a three door car, because obviously if you've got passengers in the back, all about safety, if something happens, you need them to be able to get out in a hurry. So that's why it's very important to do that. With all that being said, we're gonna move on to the mechanical things with this car. We're only gonna check one side, so one rear, one front. Again, these are things that you can check yourself at home. We're not going greatly in depth on this. We're just gonna to touch base basically on the parts that you can check for free yourself with a little bit of time and a little bit of help from this video. Now, like I said, we're gonna jack up this side. We already know what is wrong with this car, but for, again, for your guys' purposes, let's do this. We do read the comment section guys. Some of you have been asking where you find the jacking points on the cars. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly, briefly explain where you jack the car up and why. Most cars will have this sill. You can see it right here. This is a strong point in the car. Now, some cars do have designated jacking points, but 90% of the cars don't. So this is basically what this is for. This is your jacking point. Obviously you need to be not in the middle of the car, but where you need to be jacking it up. You saw in that last clip, Jack was about roughly here, which is where you need to be. And then you put your axle stand to the right hand side or to the left hand side, but the axle stand has to be closer to the wheel. Now, <clears throat> underneath here, while you're jacking it up, just make sure you are checking the jack and make sure it's not slipping off or anything like that. And then when you drop the car on the axle stand, make sure it is roughly in the middle and it's gonna be safe. So with that being said, Jack's just gonna demonstrate here for you guys. You can see he's on the sill, jacking it up. Axle stands going underneath, directly behind. Again, closest to the wheel. So then drop the jack on the axle stand. Give it a little push, make sure it's all secure. So. Um, yeah, so now, why this is jacked up, you can also check for rust under the sills and such, can't you, as well? It's a good time to have a look over your car. Not many people do this or get the opportunity to see like all this stuff. So if you're not sure, go and buy a, a decent jack, go and buy some axle stands and just give it a try. You never know, do you? Like anybody can jack up a car as long as it's safe and just making sure everything's okay. With that being said, we're gonna move on to the mechanical parts of this car. The first things you wanna check are? Your tire. Very, very important. What's your lad depth, Jack? 1.6 millimeters. That is the minimum. Anything above 1.6 millimeters, that is accepted. 1.6 is just accepted, but that's kinda of not what you want. You wanna actually make sure you can pass the MOT. By checking tire tread, do you want to show them quickly how you test it? Obviously, you haven't got the actual tool to test it. When we're talking tread, where exactly do you test it? Uh, it's around central three quarters of the tyre. It's usually about that. Yeah. Or, or like a thumb inwards. So but, that's where you want to be checking it? But it's a measurable tread, so it's this bit on this tyre. Anywhere in them. And if you haven't got a, a tread lift gauge, you could just use the markers on the tyre. So like if you level with them, you need a tire. Right here, like here, that is a tiny, tiny bit over, but again, we do need some new tires. What he means by level markers, they're right there, if you can see in between the treads. So that gives you a bit of an indication as to how low your tire depth is without the tread depth gauge. So again, <laughs> Jack is wafting his fart at me. With the tyre, there is more things that you can check, which are... Make sure you've got the same size tyre, as I tell you there, on the same axle, so it's 195, 45, 16. Make sure that is the same on the other side, and the same for the back, but the back don't have to match the front, as long as on the same axle they're the same. What it means by that is front the same, backs the same, pretty much. <laughs> And check on your side walls on the inside, inside here. This is going to be difficult for us to get to. 
We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We don't know that show. Go on, we're in there. The inside here. Yep. And the outside here. Yep. Check for any cuts, bulges, or splits or anything like that. Because anything that can basically defect the tire, isn't it? Yeah. So cracks, bulking, bulging, splits, banana splits, stones, pebbles, geckos. Jaffa <laughs> and Jaffa cakes, yeah? Jaffas? Yeah. Jaffas. Hang on, we're going to cut this now. We're going to go and get some Jaffa cakes. <laughs> cut. Last step for the tyre. Jack is not caressing it. He's just making sure that there's no misshapen bits on it or any lumpy parts as well. That is actually a check on the MOT. So again, you can do this yourself. Very, very simple, if you just saw. Also, want to make note, make sure you're on a lap, flat level surface if you're going to do that with a back tyre because you're going to have to take the handbrake off. Yes. So, make sure you're on a flat level surface. If you're unsure, put a brick right in the middle of the wheel, and good luck. You'll need it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can actually use that method, so you can use that to check your back tyre. Now, what is the next step? Check for play, and any suspension component, brake pipes, So pretty much the last step for you guys that you can check at home is going to be for play in the wheels, in the suspension and all that sort of stuff. Also, brakes. So, let's crack on. You shake your wheel side to side, see if there's any movement. Well, not so much movement, but like knocking. Like, do that. Do what? Do that. <laughs> So he's basically got pressure on one side, pulling one other side forward, pressure on the other side, pulling this side forward. Check if any play or anything like that in the wheel, or any noises or clunking noises, etc. He's now gone from 3 till 9 o'clock, he's now gone from 12 till 6, to do the same thing, to check for any more play. It's like you had to count, I think. I actually did, really bad. And then, give it a spin and make sure your wheel bearings not rough and... So how would they know that the wheel bearing's rough? You'll hear it. Well, really bad. Yeah, you can feel it as well. Not, not so much in a, the ones where the drive shafts are, but you will hear it. Yeah. If it's bad. Okay. So he's going to do that now and just quickly check. That's just a noise from the brakes, so that's fine. So that doesn't sound like the brakes are binding or anything like that. That's just general noise, isn't it? Yeah. So that, do not worry about. Again, you will know if something's wrong, it will be a hell of a lot louder than that, or a very more high-pitched, or something will just fall off the car. For this bit, checking the discs, and just making sure that the pad has got enough pad on it, and it's not thinned down, and it's not grinding on metal or anything like that. So, as you've seen in these videos before, if you're following this series, we have sanded these down, so we know that these are pretty damn good. Now, the pads as well, we also know that they are also pretty good. You can just see it right there where the my finger is there you go you could just sit there plenty of pad left on these that's what you want to be checking for on that if the pads are low or you've got grooves in your brakes or anything like that it's time for some new brakes in it pretty much some new discs and pads safety safety oh <laughs> <laughs> so next step rest of your suspension components and your brake pipes and all your rubber boots for your ball joints and stuff Check your coil spring. Make sure it's seated properly in that cup. And the, some, there's one at the top as well, so make sure it's seated up there. You, you can you can just see it at the top, just. just you want to make sure the spring's not broken and seated correctly. And then look at your shocker. Just make sure it's not wet, not leaking. If it is wet, again, leaking shocker means new shocker. If it's misted, it will pass an advise. So how do you determine from slight and gushing slight misty so it'll just be wet with dust now it. and if it was completely just wet then that's that's past it isn't it yeah so next step and whilst you're around here you can check your brake pipe make sure it's not corroded and rotten away it's just there grab it and then get a little pull make sure there's no cracking and perishing jack is now checking under the car jack explain to him what you're checking for cv boots checking for splits do you want to just point to it for him? Yep. Let's shuffle around. Every day I'm shuffling. 
fuck's sake. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that. Yep, there we go. Is it inside one or outside one? That's your outside. Yep. And there's one there. So what are they checking for on that? Uh, just spin it around. Make sure there's no splits in it. Leaky grease. Make sure you've got clips on it as well. And check your bushes on your arms. There's one there and there's one at the back over there. Can you see it? Just, yep. There. Yep. And check your boot on your ball joint. Make sure that's okay. Okay, there. And on your drop link. You give it a pull, make sure it's not knocking. I've got any play on that. And check your boots as well, rubber boots. Make sure they're not split. And that's it. So that is pretty much it for your front corner. Again, you want to just do that on the other side and replicate what you've just done. Checking all them components. Again, something easy you can do yourself for in this video. This is why we want to do this video because you guys can, like we said, check yourself and learn yourself about the things that you need to do for your MOT. These are very, very simple things that make a huge difference. The last thing you want to do is take your car for your MOT and then turn around to you and say, you need this doing, this doing, this doing, and this doing. You want to have confidence when you take your car that it's going to pass first time. So with that being said, we're going to move from the front now onto the back. So the back is pretty much straightforward. It's similar to the front. You check your tire depth, you also spin it for your wheel bearing noise, you check for play as well. Again, make sure you take your handbrake off and make sure you have something behind the other tyre under there. Because if you don't, your car's going to go rolling. It's best to do this on a flat surface. The other things you can check on the back are your struts for leaking again. Misting will pass, but obviously gushing will fail. <laughs> <laughs> what else can they check, Jackie boy? Similar sort of things, brake pipes, uh, coil spring, shocker. And bushes. So again, we don't really need to show you that because it explains itself. It's pretty much similar to the front in it, Jack. So there's not really any reason for us to show you that. Again, pretty similar. It's just on the back of the car. Again, you'd repeat that on the other side. Very, very straightforward. Come on. I'll go to the toilet. I'm dropping kids on so with this video, we briefly touched on those things that you can check yourself, your MOT. Again, we didn't go much more into detail on that. We just wanted to check the few little things. Now, some of you guys have asked for that, so that's why we provided that. Again, thank you guys for tuning in. There's going to be another video again tomorrow, 6 p.m. We're all upload time for us is always 6 p.m. So make sure you're hitting that notification icon to be notified every time we upload. Like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And also, any questions, drop it down below in the comments. That we didn't, if we did miss anything out. Peace, guys. He's done having a. <laughs>